today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech is iconic. To have the foresight to know that standing there right now that this is going to be a monumental moment in American history and know that from the very beginning just speaks to Dr. King and his character. The speech came at a time when America was going through a big change. The African Americans that were in this country was asking for civil rights, equality that had yet been given to them, and that speech set the tone for the civil rights movement that had just begun, but it set it for years to come. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. So my favorite part is when he talks about um, these documents that we as Americans kind of hang our hats on, Emancipation Proclamation, Constitution, Declaration of Independence. Um, he describes them as like promissory notes. He was asking for a part of what we call the American dream. And here we are not being able to take part of that yet being promised in the Constitution that every man was created equal, but there was no equality for the black man. My favorite part of the speech is when he talks about having character being your justification. Because I think character is more than the outer layer of a, of a person. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. When it comes to drinking from the cup of bitterness and hate, I think that as far as I'm concerned, I think it was right. I think it was right for the time period. And I think it has held on true for us even today. You're talking about a person who his life was literally threatened and his family's life threatened at this point daily. And still, his actual thought process was to say to people, hey, look, it can't, you cannot come from a hatred place. You have to come from a loving place if you want to create any kind of change. That's a powerful message. If there was to be a racial war or, or to go about to change with violence, a whole, we, we wouldn't have survived as a country. And King knew that. We can't achieve this goal by fighting. We can't achieve this goal by hatred. It can only be done by us working together, not just black people, but everyone. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I think today it's still the, the driving force. Like everybody wants to be treated equal. And when you think about what equality looks like, like that, the, this speech is one of the first things that you think about. Two things that came out of his actions in this speech and that are pretty significant are like um, Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. And for me, Civil Rights Act obviously is, you know, very important to me and my family, but like the Voting Rights Act also, it's like very, very significant. The opportunity to vote is massive. It, it can't be underscored. And so that aspect of thinking about it, of I will never have an opportunity to uh, vote for an elected official, I'll never have a, an opportunity for my voice to be heard. Um, that's demeaning on so many different levels. And not only is it demeaning, it's hurtful and it, it lasts for generations. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. My dream is for America to, to come together, to continue to work toward the, the problems that we have. And one way that we see this being done is the work of the church itself, where everyone is welcome, where all cultures, all ethnicities, that is the only way that we can beat hatred is through the message of the cross. When I think of the future, of course, I think of my kids. And I want speeches like his and marches and demonstrations and things like that not to be necessary. My only wish is that on this celebration of MLK that we take a moment to not only look at the legacy of the man, 
but look at the power of the human being. And I'm hoping that after this, everyone else will look at themselves and think, what character do I bring to the table that when I leave here, it will live on after me? You know, my dream for the future, I, we actually have a choice of how do we want to create the change that we want. And so for me, I keep coming back to that place of, please, Lord, <laughs> let me maintain it in a place of like coming from a loving place and more like coming from a Jesus perspective. This huge change can happen. And Dr. Martin Luther King is a, a great vessel and a great thought process of that. But at the same time, um, we've all been called to do some of these powerful things. And it's through Christ that we're gonna be able to make that happen. We'll be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free.